Whoa. Jeez, I don't even know if that's gonna fit on me. <laughs> Sam? Sam? I'm building up for Alright, it's time. It's time to do something that, uh, well, sort of controversial, but if you've seen it on Instagram, then you know what it is. Whoa, my God. And that is this. I know what you're thinking. Don't do that, you bloody idiot. But tell you what, this gives it a bit of a touch of like old school muscle feel. And that's what I've sort of come from. These are on a lot of the old 70s and 80s like muscle cars back in the day. Tiranas, Monaros, things like that. It's not gonna be sticking out like it is now. It's gonna be blended in. I'm gonna paint it white. And pretty much that's what I'm gonna take you through now. So I think the plan is really just to trim some of these edges, get it sitting right. I'm gonna chuck a couple of pot rivets in intermittent places along it and then use fiberglass and bog to try and smooth this thing out. Okay, now, so before we do anything, what I've done is actually clean the bonnet, giving it a wash, and I just wanna go through and scuff up the paint because when you bog, when you use the fiberglass, and when you actually go to prime and paint it, you don't want to do it over the shiny paint. So what I'm doing now is basically a rivet in each corner. That's just to locate it. Once those holes are drilled, then there's a hole in the bonnet and a hole in the actual um, shroud as well. I can drill these out. I'm going to use some of this. Uh, what is it? It's called Fix All. I've used it for all sorts of stuff. Um, I use it on my flares when the flares went onto the body. So I run a big bead of that around the whole perimeter and then rivet it down, let it set and then bog over the top, and then I can probably grind back the top of those um, rivets once that's finished, and it will just set itself there. That's just a plan anyway. So I'm gonna, oh, gonna let that set now, and you can see that this lip doesn't match up, so I'm gonna cut just along that front line there, using maybe a die grinder or a flat disc. That'll be the start of the molding process. So there are two types of fillers that I'd use. One is just a lightweight car filler and the other one is a fiberglass enforced filler. So with the fiberglass enforced filler, that sort of, you, when you use it, you're gonna have to put this light filler on top anyway. So it's really for more of a structural thing. So I used it when I put that scoop on there to really fill the big gaps and give it some strength. I used the same stuff when I molded my flares onto that front guard. So that gives it strength as well because it's sort of fiberglass encased sort of Filler, so it'll give it that fiberglass strength. And then you come over top with just your normal lightweight car filler. So that's just normal bog, and it's sort of a finer material, so when you lay it on there, you'll see that it goes quite smooth, and you can actually feel the little gaps that will be, you know, no doubt in this fiberglass filler. Okay, so what I've gone and done now is basically sand off the fiberglass stuff. So I've gone through and smoothed all this off with the sandpaper. Um, I've done this side, the front, and then the other side still needs to be done. But what I'm gonna do is put the fine um, bog on this side, and while it sets, I'll sand the other side. So I just use, I think it was 120 grit sandpaper with the air sander. All right, Legends, so we have one order of business to take care of in this episode, which is drawing the winner of the iRace competition. The last episode that was released, which was the uh, Falcon on 40s video, there was a competition that I was running um, to appear in the next episode. And um, well, you guessed it, it's got something to do with racing. So there was a whole lot of entries into this competition, which was great to see. And I have drawn the winner here. So the winner was Jordan Abreu from Yanjibup. Sorry if I said your name wrong, Jordan. But you have won this competition and um, I want you to send me a message and I'll give you all the details of what you need to know. So we'll be filming that episode pretty soon and um, you and a mate actually will be involved in that. So send me a message, dude. And for everyone else um, who entered, thank you for entering so much. You gotta be in it to win it, of course. And there'll be plenty more competitions coming up for you guys to get involved in. And um, well, we'll get back to the episode now and there's a bus going past, ruining my shot. Now, oh, see ya. Okay, so progress has been made. I've actually done like multiple bogs and sanding, bog and sanding, used different types of sandpaper and um, got this long arm thing. Actually, the old man came around, he's got this sort of 
long flat bar which actually gets all these little lumps smooth because I managed to get the actual curvature right but then when you run your hand along like this it was sort of up and down so a couple more layers of bog and it's feeling pretty good now so I think we're about ready for primer so what I'm going to use is etched primer now that's something that can attach itself quite good to like bare metals and the bare fiberglass such as this I'm only really going to cover where this black area is I've only feathered it where the white is on the side so I'm not going to repaint those very outer edges, it's really just blending it from where the bog ends into the original paint. So we'll get the primer on there next, that's just gonna be a spray deal. And then we'll have to sand it again using a finer grit sandpaper, maybe an 800 grit. And then we can start looking at top coats. So we're gonna use the same white again, a couple of layers, and then of course the, um, the glitter in there as well. So let's get into this. Okay, we've got the primer on there now, so I'm just gonna let it set a bit now. I've actually noticed that quite a few little pinholes have come up, so I'll try and fill it with another layer of it, but it looks like I'm have to do a little bit of skim of that fine bog there just to fill those holes. And then I'm gonna sand the whole thing back with 800 grit. What I wanna do first though is just spray a bit of um, just black guide coat over the top, so just a quick little flick, and what that does is put little black spots everywhere. So when you sand it, you know where you've been and you can actually see any high or low spots in there if you want to make sure that there's no little bumps or anything. But of course, we're not doing this in a booth. If it's in a booth, it just gets all sucked out. But I'm doing this DIY bush mechanic spec, of course. So um, yeah, for you guys, it's really just doing it in the backyard and you're going to get this kind of result, but it still looks mint. So um, yeah, next stage is sanding. And then we're going to look at doing the top coat. So I've got the um, main colour on now and I'm just about to do the coat with the clear and the pearl. So I've gone and put the pearl in the actual clear coat this time because it's actually the powdered type. So normally when you have a metallic paint, you kind of put, it's like a silver kind of paint that you put in any other colour and that gives it the metallic. But when you're using a powdered pearl, we got any powdered pearl here? What the powdered pearl is, it's kind of like a fine dust. Now it's very transparent, so I've put it in the clear coat because it will give it the most sort of sparkle and fleck when it's in the sun. So that's just one thin layer of clear with that pearl in, and now it's time to do the main coat of clear. So it's a two part, it's got a, um, the clear and then a hardener. So this will give it that strength when it's actually dry. So probably two or three solid thick coats of clear, and then we'll see what it looks like. And depending on how the final finish is, you may or may not need to do the final stage, which is stage four, and that's polishing and getting it to look like a glass finish. <laughs> So what I've done, I've actually put the bonnet back on it and I've let it sit there for a week or two. I've been for a Forby, it's been out on the road, wear and tear, a bit of sun, bit of rain, and it's really settled in now. And what's happened, it seems to have dried nicely in the sun over those few days and there's actually no orange peel in the paint there. So I don't have to do that last step, which is sanding it back and buffing it. I'm pretty happy with the finish the way it is. It pretty much matches up well with what's already existing on the fenders either side. So there we have it, guys. I'm actually quite happy with it. There's been no cracks, uh, even after going for a 4B, going through some corrugations. There's no little hairline cracks down the side or the front, which actually happens on these flares here. You can see like quite big cracks coming through on those flares. And the difference is I used the fiberglass and glue on this scoop, whereas on the side, I only used a bit of that silicon and then bogged it. So that's the difference it makes, guys. Hope you learned something from this, and if you want to install anything on your car that you want molded in, a, a scoop, a forward-facing one, 
for a newer intercooler or a bigger one or even some side flares like that this is a really good way to do it because i feel like this is going to stand up the test of time it's also served a purpose as well it lets that hot air come out the top of the bonnet so for my situation it keeps that low pressure system inside the engine bay for the radiator to suck the cold air and then the hot air pumps out the back there only downside i've found is when I go through water and it kind of quenches a bit. A load of steam comes out the top and fogs up my windscreen. But whatever, look, you gotta deal with something, I guess. It's just one of those things. Can't be perfect. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe. And I want you to hit that little bell next to the subscribe button because that means you'll get a notification if a video goes live so you can watch it straight away. Also, hoodies, I haven't got one yet, but they are literally about to land at my door. So the pre-order is on at the moment, but soon, probably when you're watching this, the hoodies would have arrived and you can get that now because they're selling out way too fast. I pretty much got only a few different uh, few different ones left in each size. Um, being winter, of course, it's like raining already. And um, add me on Patreon if you want to see more behind the scenes stuff. And the next two weeks worth of videos will be sitting there ready to go. And um, I'll see you guys next episode. Take it easy. Peace. I've just spent three months doing engine upgrades on my motor here. And I've been told I'm not allowed to turn the key until you press subscribe. Please press subscribe.